Good day folks, it's Tony Fortunato from The Technology Firm. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Wi-Fi noise and Wi-Fi performance. It's um, going to be an interesting one. Enjoy. I cannot believe how many positive comments and feedback I've gotten from my simple drawings. <laughs> I, I don't know why I'm so intrigued by that, but here we go. Here's another one. So I've got my laptop over here running iPerf3. It's my iPerf server. It's cabled into my wireless router. It could be a switch, whatever, it doesn't matter as long as it's cabled in. It's on the same subnet as well. It's not on the drawing, but it's just going to be assumed. And it's a one gig connection. Everything is fine. Everything works. There's no cabling issues and all that good stuff. So from this access point, it's about 18 feet through this drywall with wooden studs to this microwave oven. And as I always call it, the microwave jammer. And three feet from the microwave jammer, we're going to have our NetAlly AirCheck 3 running its iPerf client connected only to the 2.4 gigahertz band. All right, that's kind of critical here because the microwave is going to generate interference on 2.4 gig and we want to be able to see what that interference looks like and what the impacts of that is with our testing. So with every single test I do, I always try to establish some sort of baseline. Otherwise, you jump right into the test. You don't know what's good, bad, normal, that kind of thing. Every single wireless network is going to be different. It depends on the client, the radios, the antennas on the client and the access point, the environment in which they reside in, uh, what kind of walls is it traversing, other interferers in the area, including other access points, so on and so on and so on. In other words, don't expect these kind of results wherever you happen to work figure them out for yourself and see how they stack up if you'd like. So I created something called a Wi-Fi profile in the air check and that forces the tool to use 2.4 gigahertz on that access point. Now here's the baseline of it running its, its typical test and as you can see it's up around 100 meg and this is going to be the upload that's the upload and that's the download. So for the people who don't know iPerf or iPerf3 when you run it, the first thing it does is always an upload, and the second thing it always does is a download. So this follows that same pattern. So with the AirCheck G3, you can get this uh, spectrum analyzer with it. It allows you to do a spectrum sweep. Now you cannot do this with a Windows laptop and the default drivers and Wireshark for example you can't there's you don't get this right so usually for spectrum analysis you have to purchase a USB or adapter of some kind that will be able to scan the spectrum so as I turn on the microwave I want to see what it looks like right you can see it jumping around now it doesn't matter um, how many colors pop up it just I just want to see visually what it looks like and if you take a look here there's there's more going on here after the 2.4 5 gigahertz than before that and it's just it's a note right it's a note so as you go into Wi-Fi you kind of superimpose this onto your channel plan and you can start to say wait a minute does that mean if I was on channel 11 I would have more of an issue than if I was on channel 1 possibly that's what you prove right so in the next test that's what we're going to take a look at is the impact of that testing. All right. Uh, first, I need to make sure you understand that whenever I do any kind of testing, it's never one test, right? It's typically going to be minimum five, drop the best, drop the worst, average of three, that kind of thing. So this one shot is just one of the five. Okay. So don't, don't believe for a moment I use this one snapshot and said, aha, I'm done don't do that right always take at least five measurements as a sample I, I say five but you'll have a number better for yourself but always try to drop the high and drop the low just to kind of make things a little bit more I'm gonna say easier and realistic so you can clearly see when I start the microwave because I did it at the beginning and at the end of the transfer you can see it kind of knocks it down and then it comes up and then I turned it on again and it started going down again right now as we talk about interference and interferers on Wi-Fi, the, the other thing you want to see is the recovery time. How long does it take the device to kind of, you know, shake its head and, and get back into the game again? And does it go back to the same level it was at, or does it just stay low for the remainder of the test? I did a 30-second upload and a 30-second download. So if you want to do this for a longer period of time, go ahead. It's always better, but for the purposes of this example, 
30 seconds is plenty good. And you can see the same thing happened on the download. So on the upload, it dropped to approximately, I'm just eyeballing it, approximately, I'm going to say 30 megabits per second, 35, that kind of thing, right? But you got an idea. And the downloads were around the 40-ish mark. Again, I'm just kind of eyeballing things. You know, it even tells you here minimum and minimum, but this was all the way down there. So, so you just kind of just kind of eyeball it. If you really want it to be accurate, you would uh, export the values and then take them into Excel or visually look at them or apply an Excel formula for min and max, that kind of thing. But for now, this is good enough. We see the impact of turning on the interferer, in this case the microwave, and how it affects our throughput. Now before I go on, I, I want to just briefly say this was a real scenario um, at a school. Okay. The cafeteria had rearranged a bunch of equipment, including the uh, industrial commercial uh, microwaves, and they moved them all to a different wall. And on the opposite side of the wall, up in the drop ceiling, was the access point. And it caused all sorts of problems, and that's what made me think of this scenario when I was doing things. Now, it also explains a lot of times on a personal note, if you are on 2.4 gig for whatever reason, and all of a sudden the kids go and, and throw microwave popcorn in and, and nuke it for whatever, a couple of minutes, and all of a sudden the Netflix streaming kind of gobbles up, that kind of thing. That's the same kind of idea. It doesn't have to be a microwave, though. This could be anything. I've even seen an LED light bulb cause this kind of interference, all right? So uh, just try to keep an open mind is what I'm saying. So now I changed my location from this test client from 3 to 10 feet. Because the next question the client had is, okay, what if you were further away from it, right? And the question is, sure, how far do you want to be from it? Now, you have to make sure you understand where everything is. Because if this microwave oven is literally between the path of the two devices, or the access point and the test unit, it's almost not going to matter, right? It's, at some point, it's going to cause some kind of interference and negative impact. But in this case, we said, all right, let's move away from it. And now this guy's going to have a better line of sight with less interference. That's the theory, right? Let's just see what happens. So now here we go. And you'll notice real quickly, once you get the methodology set up and you get your chart set up and your test point set up, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to say, what if, bang, run a test. What if, run a test. What if, run a test. So try to do all your testing at once. And you'll also realize that when you do all your testing at once, all the environmental variables will be the same at that time. It's, as opposed to doing a test today and a test tomorrow and a test next week, that kind of thing. Try to do as much as you can up front. And if you ever have to come back to retest, I strongly encourage you to redo your tests, even the ones you had, and then add the new tests that you want to have. Because between the time of your first and your second test, if a week or a month had transpired, all sorts of things might have changed in your wireless environment, right? So you don't want to assume that whatever you did at the beginning is the same as it was right now. So on to the results. So 10 feet, you can clearly see, I only did a test in the middle of the transfer now, not at the end. Um, and you can see there's a drop, and you can see there's a drop. And it dropped to about 40 meg down and about 50 meg up. So, you know, generally speaking, just, just off the top of my head, it doesn't seem like it made a whole lot of difference. So the next question, okay, what if you're 20 feet away? What if the axis point was 3 feet further away? And you, yeah, 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 you can play with all that kind of stuff. But the, the point of the exercise was we had an interferer, in this case the microwave, and I was able to prove cause and effect, right? Turn on the microwave, lower throughput. Turn off the microwave, better throughput. So now I've got a, I'm going to say, the ideal scenario where I can control my variable, in this case the interferer. In the real world, right, this could be a motor, like I said, an LED bulb. I saw a treadmill cause a whole lot of Wi-Fi interference because it had a built-in access point. So I, I'm asking you to make sure that if, when you do your spectrum analysis and you see some really funky stuff, make sure you do some kind of test. Ideally, you're going to compare the spectrum with the actual throughput test. And if you can correlate, hey, noise went up, throughput went down, that kind of stuff, great. Um, worst case scenario, at least you know what the throughput is, and you can try to zero things out as you go through your tests. Have a good day, folks. Bye for now.